Now we're going to compute the Riemann sum for f of x is x cubed using 5 equal subintervals on the interval from 4 to 8. So Riemann sum tells me I'm going to start by finding delta x. 5 subintervals means I'm going to choose 5 important x values to find their y values for. And from a to b is 4 to 8. So Riemann sum means start by finding delta x. So b minus a over n is 5. So our width ends up being 4 fifths. It doesn't come out to be a whole number. That's totally fine. There's no rule that says it has to be. It's just nice when it is. So our width is 4 fifths. I'm going to leave it as a fraction for now. Um, it is a nice decimal, so I will work with the decimal for the right endpoint just to show you. Um, but I want you to be able to do it with a fraction as well because if your fraction is 2 thirds, or something that doesn't terminate, in other words, then you have to use a fraction. So I want to be sure that we're prepared for that. So I'm going to make my number line now, and I want to get perfectly from 4 all the way to 8. So I want to keep in mind what these are as fractions. So 4 is 20 fifths, and 8 would be 40 divided by 5. So we're going to start at our lower endpoint and add our width every time until we get to our upper endpoint. So 20 fifths plus 4 fifths would give us 24 fifths. You just add the numerators. 24 fifths plus 4 fifths would give us 28 fifths. 28 fifths plus 4 fifths would give us 32 fifths. 32 plus 4 fifths would give us 36 fifths, and then 36 plus 4 would finally get us to that 40 fifths, which is 8. So again, if you do your width correctly and are adding correctly, you should perfectly get from your lower end point to your upper end point. And so we perfectly got from our lower end point, which was 20 fifths, all the way to our upper end point, which was that 40 fifths or 8. So I just put it as fractions. So we can see that nicely in there. All right, so now we are ready to choose our left endpoints. So we have five seven rules, which means we're going to choose five x values to plug in for our left Riemann sum. Or if you want to use the other notation, the L sub 5 left Riemann sum with five seven intervals. So we're going to have our width, which is 4 fifths times each height that we need to plug in. So we need to figure out between 20 and 24, that 20 fifths or four is on the left. So we have that first box. Between 24 and 28, we'd be drawing a box. And on the left would be the 24 fifths. So we have our second box out of five. Between 28 and 32, that 28 fifths is on the left. So we'd plug that into the function. Our next box between 32 and 36, the left height would be the 32 fifths. So we have one, two, three, four y values. We need to have five for five sub intervals. So last box between 36 fifths and 40 fifths, we would choose 36 fifths. So we're gonna plug all of these in to the original function. So the original function here is x cubed. So I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to do 4 cubed, 24 fifths cubed, 28 fifths cubed, 32 fifths cubed, and 36 fifths cubed. And add them all together to get 985.6. So there's my height times my width. Don't forget to multiply by your width. It gives me 788.48 for that left Riemann sum. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing all over again, but we're gonna use the right endpoints instead of the left endpoints. By the way, the other method for choosing your left endpoints is starting on the left and counting five. So one, two, three, four, five. We would get the same five that we plugged in, whether we use the checking off boxes or the circle method. 
So our right Riemann sum, we're going to start by calculating delta x again. It would still be 8 minus 4, b minus a over n, 8 minus 4 over 5. We still get 4 fifths, but this time I'll show you how to work with a decimal because if the fraction comes out to be a decimal that terminates or stops, then I would use the decimal. I think it's a little bit easier. So it's 0 0.8 for our decimal. I'm going to draw the number line. This time I'm going to use the decimal instead of the fraction because I can. Again, if my width was two-thirds or something that didn't terminate, two-thirds is 0.6 repeating, I would have to use a fraction because I cannot round until the final answer. So rounding it and calling it just 0.6 wouldn't work in that case if your width was two-thirds. So I'm going to start at the lower end, 0.4. If I add correctly and have the correct width, I should get perfectly to 8. So I'm going to do 4 plus 0.8, which would give me 4.8, plus another 0.8 would give me 5.6. 5.6 plus 0.8 is 6.4. 6.4 plus 0.8 is 7.2. So I have my intervals there, and 7.2 plus 0.8 gets me perfectly to 8, so I feel good about it. Um, I get from my lower bound to my upper bound. I'm going to calculate my right Riemann sum, or my right Riemann sum for five subintervals. means I'm going to have my width, which is 0.8, and I need to choose the five right-hand heights. So one option is start at the right and circle five. So one, two, three, four, five. The other option is to check boxes. So between four and eight, I choose 4.8. Next box on the right-hand side between 4.8 and 5.6 is 5.6. Between 5.6 and 6.4, it's 6.4 on the right. Between 6.4 and 7.2, 7.2 is on the right. And last box, five subintervals means five heights. We're going to use F of 8. So now I'm taking these, I'm plugging into the original function, x cubed. So I'm going to do 0 0.8 and do 4.8 cubed plus 5.6 cubed plus 6.4 cubed plus 7.2 cubed plus 8 cubed and see what I get for my y value. So all of my y values added up. I'm going to do 4.8 times my y values add up to be 1433.6. And so lastly, I need to do my width times that height, which is going to give me 1146.88. So again, completely different answers between that left and the right Riemann sum. That's pretty typical when we have so few subintervals. The only way to get them to be closer to each other and closer to the accurate answer would be to make a lot more subintervals than just five. Um, but we'll see in the next section how to get the perfect answer without having to do all of this work or to do something called taking a definite integral.